I want to know how many of you know the answer to this question already, so uh, go ahead and think about it. And I'll start this thing so that you can start clicking. Forty-two percent say four, which is, I mean, D, which is ball X is positive, and ball Y is negative. And that is the correct answer. So uh, why is that? So when you bring this positive ball here, when you well, before you connect them, nothing much is happening except that this is getting polarized, right? The uh, front side of this metal it's going to uh, become negative and the back side is going to be positive, the same for this one, right? But once you connect them with a the wire, then things get a little bit more interesting because now the positive ball here is going to attract electrons from this ball and they're going to move through, uh, through the wire and end up on this ball, on this face of this ball. So the front surface of this ball is clearly going to be negative and the back uh, surface of this one is going to be clearly positive, right? And when you get rid of the wire, those charges, if you kept the wire and you put this thing away, then those charges will recombine, right? And the balls would, would again be neutral. But if you take a wire away before you uh, put this away, then this ball is going to be forced to keep its negative charge and this ball is going to be forced to keep its positive charge, okay? So uh, basically you're going to end up with Y being negative and X being positive. X is positive and Y is negative. So answer D is correct. So the first one that I'm going to do is I'm going to charge this rod negatively. And I'm going to touch the electroscope. Right, so nothing's happening yet. And then I'm going to bring the rod close. They don't seem to be doing much, right? As soon as I uh, remove my finger, they uh, go up, right? It seems like they collected some charge, but just by being removing my finger, right? So how do we? How can we understand that with what you know already? This is me touching the electroscope. <coughs> While I'm touching it and I bring the rod close, nothing happens, seems to happen there. <coughs> but then as soon as I remove my finger, uh, some charge seems to have accumulated on the electroscope. So what is happening here at this point, before I remove my finger, uh, what is happening to uh, the finger and the electroscope? <coughs> Remember that I'm a conduct uh, I'm conductor, <laughs> not a conductor, but a conductor, and uh, this, so is this electroscope plate, right? So when you have a conductor and you bring a charge uh, nearby, what happens to that conductor? It tends to get polarized, just like we saw before, right? Just like we 
talked about with the two volt. So it gets polarized, which means that since this is negative, the electrons in the neighborhood, in the part of the object, and the object is now the electroscope and my body together, right? The parts of that body that are closer to the charge, uh, the electrons from that region are going to move away. They want to be as far away as possible from this rod that has negative charge. So those electrons migrate. Some of them might land, uh, a few of them might land here. A number of them, uh, there's going to be positive charge that forms here as the electrons move away. Okay, so my finger and the top of the electroscope get some positive charge because they're closest to the negative charge of the rod. And uh, all other regions far away, that's where the electrons are going to end up. <coughs> Only a small number of the uh, electrons are going to end up here. Much more are going to end up, uh, say, at the bottom of my legs. Okay. <coughs> so now what's going to happen when I remove my finger? The positive charge that was created here seems to be bigger than the negative charge that was created here. Right? It's closer to the negative charge over there. Most of the electrons ended up on my legs. So when I remove the contact between my finger and the electroscope, that charge is trapped there. Right? And the final charge of the electroscope is basically going to be mostly positive. Right? Some of that charge is going to end up down here and that's going to make the, the leaves of the electroscope move apart from each other. Okay? So it's the same polarization phenomenon going on, plus grounding. Right? You can think of my body as grounding uh, the electroscope, allowing charge from the electroscope to move away from it. Those electrons that ended up here, some of them came from the electroscope, and that's why the electroscope ends up with positive charge at the end. Okay. You allow those negative, uh, those electrons, you allow them by touching it, you allow them, you gave them a path, an alternative place to be. That alternative place is my body, which is a bigger place than the electroscope. So th some of them will take the opportunity and leave the electroscope. Okay? Because being here, they're too close to the negative charge. All right? So that's... I'm far away, they are separated, they get closer, and then they separate again, All right? So, let's see if we can understand that. So there we had the following situation, the electroscope, we gave some charge to the electroscope, say it was negative, let me draw it a little lower. The rod is negatively charged. When the rod is far away, we know that there's some charges here. And that's why the leaves are separated, because they're repelling each other, right? So that when the rod is far away, that would be the situation. So let me maybe sketch the three cases. So rod far away, negative charge, and this is far away. The leaves are separated, they have some charge. Now the rod gets closer to the electroscope. So the rod is now close here. Not too close, but closer. So uh, the force, you can imagine that when these leaves are like this, right, they will be repelled by the charge of the rod. The rod is going to uh, push down on those two leaves that are standing up like this, just like if somebody came from above and pushed you down like this. You're holding your arms like this, and somebody comes and pushes down your arms. Why is there a force like that? Well, because the leaves are like this, they have negative charge, and there is repulsive force between these charges and these charges. So the force, the net force on those leaves is to push them down. So it's sort of helping gravity to bring down those leaves. As you're getting closer, they're getting pushed uh, further and further down, harder and harder, right? So they start to come down. But then what happens when, uh, when, if you get too close? Then once you get too close, what ends up happening is that you're pushing a lot of charge into the leaves, 
because those electrons on the top of the electroscope are being pushed, are being uh, uh, yes, pushed away by this negative charge. And instead of having, say, two on each side, now you end up with five or six of these electrons. And now the amount of charge that is accumulating there, those leaves spread out. So a lot of times in physics, in a phenomena, there might be two, not just in physics, any, any, in any uh, situation, there might be two opposite tendencies, there might be two effects. Something is affected by two different uh, effects, and one of those effects might uh, try to uh, go things, uh, make things go up, and the other one might try to make things go down, and there will be a point where there is a balance between those two effects, right? But if you move a little bit to one side, one effect wins, and if you move to the other side, the other effect wins, and you have situations like that. So that's what happens. Something like that is happening uh, over here. 